Welcome to episode 5 of module 8, Non-Infectious Diseases and Disorders. We are moving into inquiry question 3, why are epidemiological studies used? Our syllabus reference to evaluate the method used in an example of an epidemiological study and evaluate using examples the benefits of engaging in an epidemiological study. Our learning intentions, we're going to describe the types of epidemiological studies, determine key points to evaluate the validity and reliability of an epidemiological study, and outline the benefits of engaging in an epidemiological study. So let's first look at types of epidemiological studies. Epidemiology is the term given to the study of diseases, its patterns of occurrence, and the factors that affect these patterns in human populations. This study is carried out by an epidemiologist. Epidemiologists gather data on the number of people with the disease, morbidity, and the number of people that have died due to the disease, mortality, within a population. Epidemiology can be used, but is not limited to the study of both infectious and non-infectious diseases. It can also be used to study health-related events such as work-related accidents and car accidents. Epidemiology has three main aims. Firstly, to describe disease patterns in human population. Secondly, identify the causes of disease. And thirdly, provide data essential for the prevention, control and treatment of disease. Three major types of epidemiological studies. Descriptive, analytical and intervention. Descriptive and analytical studies are observational studies, which helps us to understand the causes of disease. When attempting to determine the origin of a disease, descriptive studies are typically the first kind of research done. These studies offer details about the disease's patterns, such as its frequency, the demographic segment affected, the geographic location, or, and whether or not people were afflicted for a specific amount of time. Individuals with the disease provide information about their age, sex, food, employment, drinking habits, home and work locations and places visited. Commonalities are identified in order to identify a potential cause. There are theories put forward regarding the illness's etiology. Analytical studies, on the other hand, are performed to gather additional data after a descriptive research is finished. The data is then statistically analysed to test theories on the disease's likely cause or causes. Two indicators that can be employed in these investigations are the morbidity or the number of cases of the disease and the mortality or the proportion of the population that dies from the condition. These studies also assemble information on the prevalence, the total number of individuals affected at any one moment and the incidence, the number of new cases in a given time period. Analytical studies can be two types, case control or cohort. Case control studies examine variations in exposure to potential disease causes by comparing individuals with the disease, the cases, to those without it, the controls. To determine the most likely cause of the condition, a wide range of information is gathered from both groups, including age, sex, diet, location, lifestyle, occupation and exercise habits. Richard Dole established a case control study in London in 1947 that contrasted individuals with lung cancer with those with other illnesses. Data regarding numerous aspects of their lives, such as their smoking patterns, were gathered and examined. According to the study's findings, smokers made up the majority of those who had lung cancer. Dole was the pioneer to propose a connection between smoking and lung cancer. Studying two or more comparable groups of individuals who are disease-free is known as a cohort study. One primary aspect that separates these groups is how much they were exposed to the illness's possible cause. While the other group is not exposed to the potential cause of the disease, one group is. In order to compare the resulting incidence of the disease under study, these groups are monitored for an extended period of time. For instance, A.B. Hill carried out a cohort study in England in 1951, following the case control study from 1947 that demonstrated a connection between smoking and lung cancer. Approximately a 10-year span, 
This study tracked approximately 40,000 doctors. The test group of doctors consisted of those who smoked and the other group of doctors were non-smokers, the control group. At the end of the study, it was found that the test group had a much higher incidence of lung cancer than the control group. This study also revealed that the greater the number of cigarette smokes daily, the greater the chance of developing lung cancer. The purpose of intervention studies is to evaluate the effectiveness of a treatment, for example, a clinical trial of a new medication or the success of a public health initiative. An intervention treatment's goal is to alter population-wide behaviour in an effort to lower the disease's incidence. An experimental study is one kind of intervention study that's frequently used to evaluate an experimental drug's effectiveness. People with a specific condition are observed for a certain period of time in this kind of study. Two groups are randomly assigned to the participants. A placebo is given to the other group and the trial medication is admitted to the first. To assess the effectiveness of the medication under study, the effects of the medication on members of each group are noted and statistically analysed. A quasi-experimental study is conducted if a randomised trial cannot be set up. In contrast to an experimental study, this one selects the subjects who are given the medication or treatment. A case in point is the evaluation of an influenza vaccine's effectiveness in hospital staff members. Employees in one hospital department could receive the vaccination, while employees in another would not. The two groups' influenza's incidence would then be compared. Let's look at how we can determine the validity and reliability of an epidemiological study. To ensure the validity and reliability of an epidemiological study, they should be conducted over a long period of time, say 10 or more years, include very large sample sizes in the thousands, collect a range of relevant data from a large group of affected or unaffected people. This is the case for case control studies. The data should include age, sex, diet, occupation, lifestyle and exercise habits. The use of control groups are not exposed to the potential cause of disease, but are similar in all other groups, especially for cohort studies. Identify the possible cause of the disease and any risk factors. Collect data on the incidence, prevalence, morbidity and mortality rates of the disease. Statistically analyse the data to identify patterns and trends on the occurrence of disease. Develop a management plan with strategies to control or eliminate the disease and educate the public. And evaluate the effectiveness of control and treatment groups. Benefits of engaging in epidemiological studies. By studying the frequency and distribution of a disease within a population, an attempt can be made to identify the causes of that disease. Collecting, verifying and analysing data about the incidence of disease in a given population gives researchers, health department officials and government indicators of the existence of health problems in a community. There are many benefits of engaging in an epidemiological study. When epidemiologists establish patterns about the collection and analysis of high levels of data, this allows public health authorities to manage, evaluate and plan for health services that aim to prevent, control and treat diseases and associated health problems. Information is also used by health professionals and by the government to develop policies and health promotion strategies that promote the health of individuals in the community. This is to ultimately manage, prevent or reduce future infections or occurrence. A prime example is the legislation that first passed in 1969, which required a health warning to be printed on cigarette packages in Australia to make consumers who smoke aware of the health risks. While findings from epidemiological studies contribute to a wide range of health and social benefits, their contribution to the economy is also highly regarded. This benefits the entire population as public health costs can be reduced in areas and redirected to other health areas that are in more need of funding. And that is the end of episode five. Thank you for watching.